Well, good evening. Um, firstly, I'd like to say how very pleasantly surprised I am to actually be doing this in the first place. I ran the tiniest of polls um, on Facebook, uh, only really to a small number of people, but I gave everyone a set of headers uh, about what to do for the next, uh, the next show, uh, if you can call it that. And um, uh, I was quite surprised and pleasantly surprised that Blues, a blues set came out on top. So welcome to the Blues Hour. Now, um, I had no concept at age 13, 14, really what the blues was. Obviously, we were listening to uh, British R&B bands playing a form of urban blues um, and so on, not really defining where the music was coming from or anything like that. And uh, of course, I was too young and too dim to investigate at that point in time. I knew I liked the sound of... I knew that I liked all that, you know, and all that flashy guitar playing, all the rest of it. But um, so I was at uh, big school, I was at Tynmouth Grammar, and a group of lads already had a folk and blues club. And in their little nest of albums, they had the album that literally kind of polarised me, which was Davy Graham's Folk, Blues and Beyond. And uh, that album has this amazing mixture. Nearly half of it is blues and it actually talks, it credits all the writers, you know, all, all the actual bluesmen on it. So it's the first time I had any inclination of the names. If I'd had any sort of contact with black music prior to that, it was simply that my dad, being deeply religious and liking gospel music, uh, actually had a couple of Mahalia Jackson's, mm -hmm. 78, you know, Onward Christian Soul, and all that sort of stuff. So, um, mind you, Mahalia Jackson um, railed against the idea that there was ever anything to do with the blues in her singing. She was, you know, she was dedicated to her faith and she was a gospel singer. It's, uh, mm -hmm. What a voice, though. <laughs> and... Um, so I, I kind of, you know, listened to all this and formulated, uh, you know, uh, started to pull my guitar playing together. If you'd learnt guitar from Burt Whedon, or the, the Burt Whedon book, or Dan Morgan's Play in a Day, then of course a large amount of what was in it was skiffle anyway, you know, which is directly related to the blues. You know, lots of skiffle songs are blues songs, etc, etc, etc. But uh, no, it was specifically this album, Folk Blues and Beyond by David Graham, that polarised all my thoughts and thinking. So um, I guess, uh, as I said in one of the trailers, this is the 14-year-old me, except that I can play a bit better now. <laughs> so one of the songs from Folk Blues and Beyond is Porter Granger's um, uh, Ain't Nobody's Business What I Do, which is a kind of vaudeville blues. It's become very swingy, and there are... There have been countless covers of this song all through the 20th and indeed, I suppose, the 20, 21st century, you know. Um, and uh, Alberta Hunter, Bessie Smith in 1947. Jimmy Witherspoon actually had a massive hit with it in 1949. And, um, of course, there was a specific category then, which was believe it or not, race record. Uh, Jimmy Weatherspoon hit was called a race record. It's extraordinary, isn't it? Breakfast. 
breakfast at midnight Till I found somebody new You know it ain't nobody's business What I do Buddy's business. However, as I may have done before on, on gigs, I will just uh, qualify that. Of course, I hardly knew how to finger pick uh, when I was 14, you know, although I was also listening to classical guitarists and stuff like that, you know, I already adored Julian Bream at that point in time, you know, I still didn't get this. So I'm afraid. <laughs> Here's something largely unchanged since the 30s. This is a 60s Stella made by the Harmony Company. The Harmony Company took over the Stella Guitar Company sometime in the 1930s. I can't be more accurate than that. I should look it up, really, shouldn't I? And, um, but this plank of wood has remained largely unchanged. They've been making a guitar. It's the, the, you know, the absolute budget plank of wood. Even the, um, even the bindings painted on, the, um, <laughs> the fret markers were painted on. It's just extraordinary, you know. Um, but I do quite like it, and I'll leave it a bit out of tune as I to make it a bit more authentic. So uh, if I went, well, I mean, if when I had been learning that song, it would have come out more like this. Since you left me, baby, I'm out all night without anyone to say that it's all right. You know it ain't no. But it's business, what I do. That's what it would have actually happened if you'd heard me singing that song then. It took a, a very long time to actually, um, you know, <coughs> discover all the rest of the great um, guitar players. But yeah, John Remborn and, uh, of course, more of Davy Graham, and to understand what it was that they were doing, you know. And, of course, uh, I didn't understand the chord structures as well. But that's it. Anyway, more of the lovely little Stella later on. This has become one of my... Uh, favourite guitars. So here's a little uh, blues derivative which may be familiar to uh, some of you. I can imagine the youthful Jagger and Richards going to, uh, you know, all those music clubs, you had rockabilly, you had rock and roll happening, proper rock and roll of course, and uh, I know someone who plays in a band who doesn't acknowledge anything beyond 1959. <laughs> um, and, uh, and he's got the gear as well, the Binson Echo Rec and uh, you know, the tweed fender and all those things. But, um, we have to mention Chris Barber and all this, uh, who I think always gets overlooked in terms of um, uh, bringing blues awareness back to the UK. As a young jazzer, of course, he'd already absolutely immersed himself in the blues uh, whilst touring America, and uh, so he brought a lot of stuff back. Well, as 
who used to run around with every man in town. She spent all my money playing a high class game. She put me out. I pity how I cried. A table's turn and now it's her turn to cry because I used to love her.
as a kid I grew smart You know I broke my loving's heart But I was just I was just too young to know And I'm a sea I got a mine Because I'm down here doing time I heard that low Some whistle below The Lonesome Whistle uh, from Jimmy Rogers. Um, I uh, I probably, I think, I probably heard Joanne Kelly singing that all those years ago, 40 years ago. Um, and uh, so, <laughs> dates me, doesn't it? Takes me back. She was such a great singer. Oh, yes. Anyway, uh, we won't go on about that. Um, and uh, But I think it, the version came to the fore again when I heard Little Feet's version, which is a kind of chugging blues rock version. Um, I'm not even sure if it's on any of the studio albums. It's certainly on Hoi Hoi, the compilation album, which is one of my favourite Little Feet albums anyway. It's got some lovely stuff on it. Anyway, yeah, Jimmy Rogers. OK. I'll take my glasses off. So, here's a little bit of a... <laughs> this is about as close to authenticity as I could possibly get. Uh, can blue men sing the white, etc, etc, etc. But this is... This is a standard cheap guitar. As I said earlier on, its design is unchanged for... <sighs> Well, since uh, since the 30s, it's a plank of wood. It has no sustain, and yet it somehow seems singularly appropriate for this sort of thing. There's something, there's just something about it. I, I like it, and it seems very appropriate. However, it was written by a Chicago blues man called Jimmy Oden uh, in um, somewhere around somewhere around 1940 and uh, so here it is it's a bit I'm I'm trying to be a bit rough and ready here but it's uh, you know the, the it suits the guitar it suits everything so this is Jimmy Oden's song Jimmy Oden of he was called Chicago Jimmy Oden in fact and uh, this is going down slow If I don't get well no more I've had my fun If I don't get well no more Well my health is fading me And I'm going down slow All the doctors, they told me, well, I won't be here long. Well, the doctors, they told me, I won't be here long.
if I don't care about no more Yeah, health is failing me And I'm going down slow Jimmy Oden, Chicago Jimmy Oden, going down slow. Yep, back to the black guitar, the guitar that I probably use most live, certainly. And um, <laughs> actually, whilst uh, last week, whilst recording um, the basic tracks for Linda M's album, I'm glad we got that one down before uh, before lockdown. Um, uh, in fact, Ian Montague, very fine guitarist, um, chose to play this guitar. Um, which uh, was rather nice, so it was great for me uh, to be on the receiving end of my own guitar and realise uh, this was a fine choice. This wasn't even expensive as David go guitars go.
Blind Willie Johnson's I Cannot Keep From Crying. <laughs> <laughs> Useless piece of information number 327. Um, uh, my oppo Steve Knightley was actually at the Lanchester Polytechnic uh, when uh, Chuck Berry uh, played a gig there and when Chuck Berry recorded My Dingaling. There is a story behind all that, but uh, it's not mine to tell. Um, but uh, yeah, so in the um, the lighter, vaguely blues-connected uh, sort of area is this uh, this particular song. Now, again, re referring to Ry Cooder, who is always, especially with the early album, such a fantastic reference point for uh, blues and blues-influenced music, uh, of course, and uh, a gentleman who. Um, is pretty much obsessed with uh, authenticity and old valve amplifiers as well. Um, but uh, so this is um, this is on a I can't remember which album it's on now. But anyways, Chuck Berry's um, the Thirteen Question Method, uh, and that's the first place I heard it. I didn't. It's it's a minor part of uh, Chuck Berry's repertoire. But when I checked out the actual Chuck Berry actual original version. I was amused to discover that it's like almost a, a samba, you know. So um, anyway, and then there appear to be so many sets of words in it, words for it. I can only assume that uh, Chuck Berry changed it every time anyway, and Cuda has certainly changed it a lot again. So who knows? I've just selected a few verses at random. But of course, the irony of this um, this uh, Chuck Berry song is, of course, that it only has twelve verses. Uh, and so it only has 12 methods. Choose your own method, okay? Well, the 13 question method is one to use. The 13 question method is one to use. The 13 question method is the one if you wanna have some fun. Well, the 13 is the one to use Question number one We've just begun Question number two What to do Question number three Will you come out and dine and dance with me Question number four That's for sure Question number five I won't give you no jive Question number six, so I'll try no tricks. Question number seven, it's gonna be just like heaven. Question number eight, well, it's a date. Question number nine, where to dine. Question number ten, will we get in? Question number eleven, it's gonna be just like heaven Question number twelve When we're alone Well, the thirteen question method is the one to use The thirteen question method is the one to use The thirteen question method is the one If you wanna have some fun Well, the thirteen to be this guitar again really because you couldn't do a set like this without uh, including something from Robert Johnson of course uh, very prolific 
singer, songwriter, bluesman, and uh, <laughs> I just, uh, again, referring back to Fleetwood Mac again, it must have been about 1968 they did Mr. Wonderful, it's all old blues numbers, and uh, I think there are four songs that go... <laughs> You know, it's a familiar sound effect. I seem to remember the drummer of my first band, Martin Pike, uh, stringing all of those intros together. But it's a very Robert Johnson thing, that is. Um, and we must thank him for it, together with all those, uh, all of those songs and uh, all that stuff. This is, uh, so as I said, we can't possibly do uh, anything like this without referring to Robert Johnson. So uh, it's absolutely one that I like very much. And again, now that I'm thinking about Joanne Kelly and all those years ago, um, I've got a feeling I may have heard this first also being sung by uh, Joanne Kelly. It's possible my memory is, of course, very faulty and I'm so old. But... <laughs> form it is at least a blues rock number uh, it's my favorite Chris Rea song but I kind of uh, I've started so I'll finish basically it just about sits in this but this is in one of my favorite tunings G minor Well, I'm 
standing by a river The water doesn't flow And it boils with every poison You can think of I'm underneath the street lights But the light of joy I know Scared beyond belief Way down in the shadows And the perverted fear of violence Chokes a smile from up my face Common sense is ringing on the bell This ain't no technological breakdown This is a road to hell to hell. Uh, so we come to the Reverend Gary Davis. I've been doing this song forever. I think probably I've been misleading people for years in fact uh, because I somehow had it in my head. This is the first song that I learnt from the David Graham album which is the Reverend Gary Davis's The Cocaine Blues. Of course this song actually bears no uh, ref resemblance, sorry it does bear reference but not resemblance to of course the classic uh, JJ J, J. Kale song. Um, JJ Kale and all that kind of thing is a whole subject on its own. Maybe I'll do a thing of JJ Kale songs at one point in time. That would be fun. That would be great because from JJ Kale comes Mark Knopfler, Dire Straits, comes Eric Clapton, just loads and loads of people, that shuffling boogie type blues and blues orientated stuff. So anyway. But this is, uh, I think this is the original Cocaine Blues, and it's by the Reverend Gary Davis. And I think it was the first uh, serious sort of, uh, it's quite ragtimey, David Graham's version. I've, I've moved a long way away from it. It's ragtimey, but it's got a whole load, actually it's got a whole load more stuff in it, you know. Um, sure that all those chords are there you know my memory <laughs> so Reverend Gary Davis cooking blues Come baby, I'm dressed in blue 
salt and cocaine's making me sick. Cocaine is running around my brain. Come on, baby, answer dressed in white. But if you love me, won't you stay? Well, there's a whole bunch of uh, stuff coming up in the future. Keep uh, keep your eyes open, my dears, for um, all kinds of show of hands uh, activity. Obviously, we've just recently, uh, we've now filmed an actual show, and weren't we lucky that we managed to get it in that weekend, unknowingly, uh, before we all got locked down again. So there is a full concert show being edited, um, and... Uh, if the date hasn't been published already for broadcast, uh, then uh, it will be very shortly. I've already seen two roughs and... <laughs> two roughs. I've seen a couple of roughs and uh, it's looking pretty good. Um, the next uh, the next online gig, as I've uh, probably already said somewhere, um, will be back to a standard gig, sort of two halves, like a folk club gig. and um, But it will have a special theme to it, so more about that later. I'll be helping to raise a bit of cash for a young man called uh, Morgan Bain who's going off to Kenya to do what we used to call voluntary service overseas and he's a fine young guitar player and he's going to be uh, he's going to be teaching in the evenings so um, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on there I hope this is all uh, I hope this is all interesting to you lot because it really um, as I said in I think one of the trailers you know this is taking me back to my sort of 14 15 year old self playing all these uh, great songs very, very badly uh, indeed and sort of learning to finger pick in the process. So, uh, um, uh, but yes, what what fun and what a pleasure it's been to actually do this. Let's do something else themic again. But I mean, I could go on forever with blues, ragtime and blues related stuff for obvious reasons. So uh, there you go. Well, uh, thanks for listening, my dears. Um, uh, lovely to see you all, and uh, take it easy. There's loads more stuff coming up in the not-too-distant future. So keep an eye out for my next gig, which will be helping to support a young friend of mine called Morgan Bain and his bid to head for Kenya next year to do a voluntary service overseas and to teach uh, kids uh, to play guitar. So uh, watch this space. There'll be plenty more about that. In a minute, reverting to Davy Graham again, and um, this is uh, a absolute lead belly standard. Basically, I'll finish with this. Thank you, uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is, uh, as always, dedicated to the late Nick Quamby for the. Uh, that little riff which he uh, uh, put into it uh, when we were doing it with the band. Thanks ever so much, folks. Yeah, no. 
sweet Take it easy. Good night.
Until my body is just a shell I'll let my